This is IBM Museum. In tonight's video, I'm once again working with the IBM PC convertible. That's model 5140. These units were released in April of 1986. This is IBM's first attempt at a laptop because it had a Nikon battery pack internally on these units that you could you could operate from for a short period of time limited functionality of the system instead of being plugged into the wall outlet my unit here does not have a functional battery pack I'm running it from the wall outlet but just going through and especially in this case I have to power from the wall outlet if I also have these these monitors that I'm that I'm demonstrating tonight over on the left hand side is the monochrome display for the PC convertible. On the right is the color display for the PC convertible. And they operate, you have to have the option of the CRT slice on the back of the PC convertible. This goes through and connects up to the IO bus. This is another slice just like the the PC Junior model did. And it has the connections for the monochrome display as that composite video out, RCA connector. The color display attaches down here, very similar to the PC Junior as well for that 16 pin connector. And I think this is a light pen or some other device. I'd have to look on Lewis Olin's page on how he has this documented to see what the functionality of that port is. Now, there were some of these units that were sold with just the where it has the composite video connector but these other two locations were blocked out interesting enough though if you peel off the block outs there's still the full connectors these operate fully just like any other version of the CRT slice okay I did have one that I opened up before the video it's just a matter of going through and pulling out some of the metal pieces detaching the from this area and the the circuit board that's double stacked here comes out from there and it probably has an MC 6845 uh, controller chip just like a lot of the CGA boards and even monochrome boards do for the IBM PC and Lewis Olin does have this documented on his on his pages I'll provide a link in the description I'll probably take apart this adapter and take high resolution photos of it just for further viewing pleasure in this case so let's go through and let's let's see if what these what these units display now I have likely a, a broken diskette drive at least for the for the a drive which is on the left and after I fix that I'll release a later video to where we can go through and I can show what's on the startup diskette this diskette is actually keyed um, checks for the model string in the BIOS and will not run on any other system but the PC convertible and normally when you operate these monitors you want to remove the display that's why this is called the the convertible is that that removal display this is actually the later backlit dis display has the two controls that was even better viewing but as you saw on the video very hard to, to see this text unless you're close up on the display even over that that camera connection like we have showing here all you see is just scans now if you do leave this connected it does blank it at some point and then the information comes up on the screen but for the full potential of showing what these screens display and the initial splash screens I'm going to go through and remove it like it should be. And in this case, you press the bottom here. This plate rotates forward, and you simply lift it off gently and place it off to the side. Okay, let's go through and let's power up the unit. I'll need a 
to power on the display, the color display. I have this unit at 640 KB. And the interesting thing is the displays show at the same time. They mirror each other, but possibly the first dual display that was on the IBM system as well, rather unintentionally if you had both types of monitors. Okay, and it goes through the animation of prompting us for that startup diskette and turn it into the A drive and pressing F1. In this case when it doesn't work it actually the animation shows it being ejected from the drive and breaking apart that it is non-functional. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to press F1 again They should, I guess I'll have to eject the diskette to then press F1. And that puts us into ROM Basic. So if you do like this video, please click on the appropriate spot. Please subscribe to my channel. There'll be much more content like this later on when I do have a functional diskette drive. We'll run through the startup diskette just to kind of show what that displays on the color screen. And we can even look at some things on how that displays on the monochrome screen as well. But that's all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.